A very interesting look there at how we might be buying our cars in the near future. But could this model actually work? Well, let's get some input from DR Barton Jr., the chief technical strategist at moneymorning.com. He joins us live from Delaware. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Rochelle. It's great to be here. So why the idea of selling cars in this new and unconventional way? Is this that form of new retail? Well, I think it is a, a, a form of new retail. You know, Alibaba is doing a lot to push their technology, their great technology advantage, and all that they've plowed into technology to push that to new areas of retail. The uh, the recent uh, the recent uh, agreement they signed with Ford being part of this moving to the online model for uh, for cars. And you know, those vending machines just aren't that far off. As a matter of fact, there is a used car company here here in the States uh, that, that is doing that already. There's a 15-story used car vending machine in Singapore. So the technology is already there, and when Alibaba gets ready to use it, I'm sure they'll employ it in the field. So even though buying cars over the internet is becoming more popular, how ready are Chinese consumers to take it to this next level? Well, I believe the Chinese consumers have shown that they have a voracious appetite for things online. Alibaba is now the world's largest retailer, and they are just doing so many things well. I think it will be a natural progression for them to get people to look at this model as part of their buying process. I mean, I like to call this the, the, the puppy syndrome. If you get someone to take home a puppy and spend three days with it, it's really tough to bring that puppy back to the uh, back to the person selling it they're hoping that they'll find the same thing out with people trying out new cars it's certainly an interesting analogy but just like with cars puppies can have some issues so what are some of the concerns some of these car buyers may have well I think that uh, that traditional contact with a dealer and an agent has its downsides in terms of what we've heard of high pressure sales and probably many of us have experienced it uh, but there's also a relationship there and I think the lack of that relationship very big transaction like this could be difficult especially for older consumers I think the newer consumers are already used to that model and they'll fit right in nicely and that will grow through, throughout time as new generations come on to try this out found this what kind of technology support is needed for this sort of venture sort of selling online has lots of interesting things but there's lots of tangential technologies that are going to bring be brought to bear uh, you know when we look at why a Ford US mo uh, car maker would sign a deal with Alibaba and why Alibaba would sign a deal with Ford, it's bringing more than just the technology of online marketing and sales. It's bringing a lot of other things like, uh, like Alibaba's Internet of Things uh, they call it uh, they call it Ali OS that will be used to help cars become more connected. They've already used it with SAIC there in uh, in China. So I think that whole technology piece will be able to drive this much more strongly. When you look at online marketing and what they do through Ali Mama, their cloud computing division, and the the big data that they have to be able to target consumers, I think this has a chance to be a really big hit, Rochelle. Now, people always have some concerns when they hear big data in terms of how much they're exposing themselves online. So what are some of the potential risks and challenges that this technology might pose? Yeah, well, that's always a downside when uh, when we're we're uh, we're having our data collected. You know, the 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 people who run big data uh, will assure us that it's all anonymous. But putting those things together in inference engines to be able to market better is what all of this sort of uh, that we have online. That's why Google does what they do. That's why Facebook uh, does what they do, so that they can agglomerate that data, even if it's even if it is uh, it can't go back and be tagged to one particular person. So that's one thing that people want to make sure that their data is protected. I think Alibaba has a pretty good track record in that area. So I think that the biggest thing that's going they're going to have to overcome, the downside from the consumers is, can they get away from that personal touch when right. they're going out to, uh, to research and buy a car? Now, you touched on this earlier. Let's also look at the Ford-Alibaba partnership. How do you expect that to impact each other's business? 
Yeah, well, I think Ford has a lot to gain from this. Number one, they've had some struggles in China in particular. The first 10 months of 2016, their sales were down 5% year over year, where a fellow competitor or a General Motors sales were up 2.2% for the same time. So they're looking for a way to revive themselves. Um, so I think tapping into that, that uh, Alimama marketing platform, the cloud computing and the AI, and the Ali OS where they can put that and get some connect, more connectedness in their cars in China is going to be a huge boon to Ford. For Alibaba, they've got a soup-to-nuts automaker that is already one of the leaders in autonomous driving and that is committed to bringing new capital, new models, and especially new electronic vehicles into the Chinese market. And just quickly, if we could look at the impact on car dealerships and, of course, those ever-eager car salesmen working so hard there, how do we expect this to fall out for them? Well, of course, when any time we have a new thing coming, online sales of automobiles in this case whenever there is a progressive move there's somebody that's going to take the brunt of it this case it probably is car dealers but the ones that adapt to it i think will still do very well we've got to remember that the car dealership model just under half of the profits that come from a car dealership come from maintenance and part sales so that that part of the business, if they can tap into the online and continue to grow their, um, their maintenance and part sales while still taking a part in the, uh, in, the, in the revenues for new cars and for used cars, I think the more innovative dealers will be able to adapt and the ones that who, who are in stuck in the old come into the showroom and let us beat you into a car sales, those folks are going to suffer. All right. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Barton Jr. there from moneymorning.com.